To start the restore process, you're going to need a CD with the Restore CD ISO image on it. To do that, go to connect.microsoft.com and download the ISO. Now this is the same area where you found the release candidate, so you'll just have to log in with your Windows Live ID. Once you do that, go to download, go to the release candidate, click on restore CD, download. Takes just a moment and you can save the ISO to your desktop so you can burn it to a CD. Once you've inserted the CD, start your computer and go to your boot menu. Find your CD-ROM. Once you've done that, you may be prompted if you have multiple CD-ROMs for your boot device. Your device will then start and you will select press any key to boot from CD or DVD. Now that you've done that, either choose 32-bit or 64-bit full system restore. Now I've sped this part up 64 times, so it'll go faster. You'll also take two to three minutes. Once this process is completed, a gray screen will pop up and start initializing windows, registering components, and verifying the drivers. Uh, this takes a couple of minutes, but it will start out by asking you for your currency format and your keyboard method. Click on continue. Now as you go through here, it'll also have you check your drivers. Now if you have drivers, uh, you can load them now via a USB key. If not, you can click on Continue. You'll now come to the Full System Restore Wizard. Click on Next. And now the wizard will find your server. Now if the wizard finds your server, you're in uh, good shape. You'll enter in your password. If the wizard does not find your server, you're going to have to go back and verify that you installed the correct drivers. Enter in your password. Click on Next. Now it'll go on and continue on the process. Once it's connected to the server, it'll pull up the backups. You can see here that I can either restore the computer that I'm on, or I can bring up a list of the different computers that have been backed up through this server. I'll stick with my Corsair 700D, and I'll click Next. You can see now it'll give me a list of the backups that are available. I'm going to choose the uh, 320 backup, and I'll continue on. Now, at this point, you can see that there are multiple volumes in this backup. Now, I'm only going to be choosing the system reserved and the C drive for backups. Again, I'm just doing this as a demonstration, so I don't need to back up all of the volumes. Again, you can see here I have 320, so I'll click on Next. Now at this point, I'm going to make some changes to the destination volume. Now you can see here I have my C drive that can go across, but you can see I have my D and my E. Uh, what I need to do is I need to go in and run the disk manager for the new disk that I'm putting in. Now the existing disk was a uh, SSD and I'm just gonna be upgrading to a 500 gigabyte disk. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna erase the partitions on my new drive so it's blank. So this is how you would start out. Now I'm going to do two things. I'm going to create a 100 megabyte partition. To do that, you just right mouse click on the unallocated space. Click on New Simple Volume. You'll type in 100 megabytes. Click on Next. Don't worry about the drive letter or the formatting. Just click Next and finish through. Then you can see now I have that new volume, which on my system is D. For the remaining amount, you'll right mouse click. You click on New Simple Volume. Assign the following drive letter. Again, the drive letters are irrelevant at this point. Just click through Next, Next, and Finish. And now we've got the proper partitions that we need. It takes just a moment to partition out. So you can see we have a 100 megabyte partition for System Reserved and the remaining amount. Now we can go through and change our source volumes to match our destination volumes. And again, it'll have you check to make sure you use the right day. So I'm going to go into C, and I'm going to choose none. Okay. You can see now that I have D new volume. So I'm going to choose system reserve to match. 
and then I'm going to choose C colon for my E new volume. Again, I'm not going to be overriding any other information that's on here. So you want to have your new volume system reserved match the new volume, and you want to have the C colon match wherever your disk data is going to. Again, check with uh, the article or check with our notes on using windowshomeserver.com for more information on how to set up destination volumes. You click on next. You can see you want green here, green arrows. Next. Now it's going to go through and depending on the amount of your data, it's going to take some time. For me, I was restoring a SSD to a uh, spindle drive, so it only took about 20 minutes. Yours could take anywhere upwards of an hour or two, depending on the amount of data that you have. Uh, it will give you estimates that will change, but it goes pretty well. Now, once you've done this, you will go through and restart. Make sure that you change now to your new hard disk. Uh, because this is a new disk, you'll probably have to go through and tell it which one to start from. You can see I have a Hitachi and then I have my other 500 gigabyte secondary drive. So I have to tell it which one. So I'm going to choose Hitachi. And now I will boot up. Now again, um, you may get a Windows recovery error. Just click on Start Windows Normally and boot the system up. Now I speed up this next part uh, 32 times, so it goes pretty fast. Uh, your system may take one to two minutes to start up the first time, and you are up and running. Once you're up and running, one of the things that you want to do is right mouse click on computer, and you want to verify information on how the partitioning and how the system worked. So let's check that out now. Uh, any device drivers or anything else may also happen in the background. But as we finish up with this, you can see here that the system restore worked. And again, to verify, uh, first of all, it's running, so you know that it worked. But to verify the information that you have and that your partitions are done correctly, you'll right mouse click on disk management and either bring up your drive or left mouse click and wait for it to populate. And you can see here now that my disk zero has everything that I need. So there you go. That is a simple system restore. Again, uh, you always do this when you're upgrading the drive sizes. Um, thank you for checking with us. Check back with using Windows Home Server.